Jeremy Clarkson is a notorious and prodigious tweeter. More than two million people follow the petrol heads every utterance online. So many of them will have seen the photo tweeted from his account yesterday of him seemingly asleep on a plane, surrounded by some of his Top Gear colleagues, next to a piece of white paper with a message scrawled on it which many would find offensive. Sadly, I fell asleep on the plane was the accompanying caption when the image was shared online. Clarkson later deleted the tweet, saying he wanted to apologise to anyone who he upset while he was asleep. But was it a case of little too little, too late? Joining me now is the rugby player turned Strictly star anti-bullying campaigner, Ben Cohen. Uh, ben, hello. Um, you've seen Evening. the picture. Hi, you've seen the picture. What do you think of it? Yeah, actually, I was uh, initially very shocked of what, uh, what well, obviously, the word gay used in an offensive manner and uh, obviously the... The, the horrible swear word that, uh, you know, it was very offensive to women anyway. So it was, it was disappointing to see that. And um, again, you know, for, for, you know, we know that Jeremy Clarks is very close to the bone in, in the stuff he does. But ultimately, you know, he has a huge following and, and the power of social media um, as why we're here talking about it. That actually, it, it has to be a role model in some way. And, um, you know, he, he can't be, be seen be doing the wrong thing and saying the wrong thing. And I think personally, we need to educate the next generation to understand what, you know, gay means and, uh, and not in a, in a casual homophobic way and used to describe him sleeping uh, on a plane with a, along with a, a defensive swear word. So, you know, again, he's in, uh, he's in the public eye. He's on, a, he's on probably one of the biggest TV shows in, in, uh, in England um, with, with, with Top Gear. So, he, you know, it's a shame that, you know, it, it's come to this point of him uh, it's, it being smeared across the, across the papers. But I think personally, He's apologised. I don't think it's, uh, you know, he's done the right thing. But what, how, how can we draw the positives out of this in some respects and actually use what he's done uh, to educate that next generation or educate people about it and saying, right, OK, then he's done wrong, he's apologised, he's taken it off, yeah. the, uh, off Twitter. Now we need to do, use that and say, right, OK, it, that's not acceptable in the social media. It, it, to be fair, it wasn't exactly a fulsome apology. And what I wonder is that you are very... You know, you're very uh, ac acutely aware of bullying. And I wondered if you, were, if you were the son of a father who was a big Top Gear fan and you saw that and you were a son that was gay and perhaps hadn't come out, what impact a tweet like that would have? I mean, you know, Clarkson's followers are also kids. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, not only in this country, you know, you know Top Gear is, you know, global. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, ultimately, you know, it... it you know, the word gay at the moment, especially around playgrounds, is used in a very casual way. You know, casual homophobia in the playground is rife. It could be uh, faggot, homo, or gay. So there's a lot of a lot of work to be done there with 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 teachers and understanding what their meanings are. So. If you're a father of a, of a child who's in the closet or, or uh, a mother who's a, uh, a child who's in the closet, yeah, it, well, one, you probably might not know, so for that reason, but it, it, when that, that child would might not want to come out, you know, think, well, actually, if I come out, what am I going to be objected to? If it's all right to see a star on TV doing that, you know, then, you know, he's, he's portraying that that's OK and he's perceiving that's OK. So it's the knock-on effects it has. And uh, bear in mind, we have come a long way, you know. 20 years ago, there was, it was racism. And it's taken that next generation to drive a cultural change. So, you know, homophobia is where racism was 20 years ago. So there's a lot of work to be done. And, uh, it, and it, it does start by, by educating the next generation so, of those youngsters so, and that's how I perceive things. So